How come you are picking on me? Sadly, we live in a society where religion has a saying much higher than it should, especially on scientific matters. Recently, people were sharing the paper Associations of Religious Upbringing with Subsequent Health and Well-Being from Adolescence to Young Adulthood, an outcome-wide analysis on Atheist Group. Given the way it was shared, I would guess they were religious people trying to prove a point against atheism. Melanie Brewster in Why is Psychology Silent When It Comes to Atheism? Religion does have a saying on academia. She report how hard it was to follow a research line on atheism and how many studies are done on religious-related topic. As she pins point, atheism is as big as LBGTQI+, but receiving very little, almost zero, attention. One said example where religion is making science looks bad are studies on marijuana. Why marijuana? It is evident that it is a religious choice, not a scientific one. For instance, they report that people that go to church has smaller chance of using marijuana. Okay, let's consider it briefly. What about a control group on those studies? I mean, what about comparing with, say, someone having a secular place to stay and learn? Could it be that the effect found is placebo? That is, any place to stay and have something to do would have the same effect. It is not mysterious that kids that grow up on the street may increase their chance of getting in trouble. However, it has nothing to do with religion. You could most likely get the same result that the authors find, without the side effects of religion, that we know well. One side effect is increasing anger towards LBGTQI+, which is something serious that must be considered. The analysis of religious involvement and health behaviors, particularly marijuana use, underscores several important considerations. First, the need for control groups and diverse comparisons is paramount in studies like these. Although the paper links regular religious attendance to lower marijuana use, it's unclear if it includes comparisons with secular groups or other forms of community engagement. Including such groups would help clarify if supportive environments, regardless of religious affiliation, play a role in discouraging drug use. Secondly, the possibility of a placebo effect or confounding variable highlights that structured communities, religious or secular, often provide social support and encourage positive behaviors, which could inherently reduce risky activities like drug use. This implies that a supportive community may matter more than religious beliefs alone. Thirdly, cultural and societal factors often intersect with religious upbringing, influencing mental health outcomes. For instance, strong religious values can sometimes perpetuate stigmas, particularly toward marginalized groups, which may impact mental well-being. While the study underscores positive aspects of religious involvement, it's equally important to consider the potential for negative side effects, such as prejudice or exclusion. Lastly, broader implications emerge when considering these findings longitudinally. Religion may offer community support, but it could also contribute to mental health challenges if accompanied by exclusionary beliefs. This complex interplay between the benefits of community and the risks tied to certain belief systems highlights the need for further nuanced research that includes secular perspectives and examines societal impacts comprehensively. Introduction A recent study examining the impact of religious service attendance on health behaviors among adolescents has sparked an important conversation about potential biases within research, particularly when discussing the relationship between religiosity and substance use. The study focused significantly on marijuana, associating reduced usage rates with frequent religious service attendance, while also briefly addressing other substances like alcohol and tobacco. This has raised concerns. Is marijuana's spotlight role here truly reflective of the data, or could it be biased by underlying religious ideologies that selectively focus on certain behaviors? Critique of the study's focus on marijuana. The disproportionate focus on marijuana as a key outcome in relation to religious service attendance is puzzling. Other substances, like alcohol and tobacco, are known to have severe health impacts and social consequences. Alcohol, for instance, can lead to a wide range of harmful effects, including addiction, liver disease, and risky behavior. Tobacco is associated with long-term, life-threatening diseases such as cancer and respiratory issues. Both are legal, readily accessible, and widely consumed, yet the study's narrative places marijuana front and center. This emphasis may reflect more than just data. It might suggest an implicit alignment with certain moral or cultural biases, 
particularly given the controversial and evolving societal stance on marijuana legalization. Why alcohol and tobacco matter in the analysis? Alcohol and tobacco use among adolescents is a pressing issue that deserves equal, if not more, attention in public health research. Despite this, studies like the one under discussion often grant these substances less critical analysis when investigating the influence of religiosity. This oversight is problematic for a few reasons. Widespread availability and cultural acceptance. Alcohol and tobacco are deeply ingrained in various cultures and often associated with social norms. Religious ideologies may selectively emphasize marijuana over these substances, potentially shaping a biased portrayal of risky behaviors. Health consequences. Research consistently shows that alcohol and tobacco carry significant health risks, often more immediate and severe than those associated with marijuana. Alcohol, in particular, is a major cause of adolescent morbidity and mortality due to accidents, violence, and alcohol poisoning. Comparative risks and legal standing. The evolving legal status of marijuana versus the established legality of alcohol and tobacco may also influence the study's focus. However, from a scientific standpoint, any study aiming to understand adolescent behavior should examine substance use broadly, without isolating marijuana or prioritizing it based on cultural or religious pressures. Addressing Potential Religious Bias The study mentions that weekly or more frequent attendance at religious services is linked to lower rates of marijuana use and early sexual initiation. But how is this association established? The comparison was made primarily against adolescents who reported never attending religious services, a categorization that overlooks the nuances among non-attendees. For instance, non-attendees may lack access to certain community resources, family dynamics, and social networks typically associated with religious involvement. This lack of contextualization risks oversimplifying the data, positioning religious attendance as a protective factor without fully examining why non-attenders might have different outcomes. To reduce such biases, researchers could expand their approach to better capture why certain adolescents do not attend religious services. Some may lack access due to geographical or cultural factors, while others may deliberately avoid organized religion based on personal beliefs. Future studies would benefit from distinguishing between never attended and chose not to attend, while exploring how different levels of religious involvement correlate with various substance use patterns. This approach would allow for a more accurate understanding, separating genuine religious influences from external factors that might affect behavior. Conclusion While the study does offer insights into potential protective factors associated with religious service attendance, the disproportionate focus on marijuana— coupled with the limited analysis of alcohol and tobacco, raises legitimate concerns about bias. For research in this area to be truly valuable and equitable, it must approach substance use holistically. Religious ideologies, however subtle, should not dictate which substances are considered more problematic than others. A more balanced, Evidence-based approach to studying substance use behaviors can help ensure that public health recommendations are inclusive and free from underlying bias.